Okay, so this is the bit where we uh, dot the pump. Very important to dot these. Um, I do uh, one on the drive end and two on the non-drive end. It's very important to dot it, otherwise you're going to have huge difficulties lining up the end plates when you go to put it back together again. Um, they have to be exact. These are the four through bolts that we're going to have to take out so that uh, we can uh, remove the uh, the rotor. Um, the switch, the rotary part of the switch, it has to come off first. Now, normally I'd, I'd do this in the vertical position up on the vise, uh, but simply for camera angle and so that you can see how it's done, I've, I've put it on the side. You have to take the springs off first. You just slip them off one end and then they are hooked on the other side. So the whole idea of this uh, rotary part of the uh, centrifugal switch um, is it has a little weight on it and it throws out when the, uh, the, the speed of the pump is about 75% of its uh, rated speed. And this in turn open circuits the start winding because this is just a uh, cap start single phase. Which basically means that once the start winding is out of circuit, it's just running on the run winding only. So here's a, a little bit of a, a close-up. You just bend the tabs. It's just popping the spanner back through so that we can stop the shaft from moving again while we take out the screw holding on that uh, rotary part of the switch. I find this uh, a lot easier normally in a vertical position, you can put a lot more weight on it and uh, that'll prevent your, your uh, flat head screwdriver from slipping. So um, that's pretty much well it, that should just pop off, keep it safe, do not lose it. For some reason if they do fall on the floor it'll take you about half an hour to find these things. So this is a quarter inch socket, uh, this is to uh, remove the uh, four through bolts. Now that we've gotten rid of the switch, we'll be able to take out the rotor completely from the stator. Now some of these pumps, the uh, thread can corrode over time, um, which makes them very hard to remove. If this happens, then the best thing to do really is to get a small flame on the, the drive end or around the threads themselves and uh, heat it up. Put pressure on the, uh, the thread bolt at the same time and you'll feel it move otherwise you risk snapping them in the actual housing and uh, that's somewhere you, you do not want to go. It's, um, it's worth taking your time to take them out and um, properly. So this is a soft hammer, um, always use a soft hammer when you're hitting metal, it's uh, not good to use anything steel, the reason being is you'll damage the metal and these are particularly important not to damage, they have little slots on the uh, non-drive shaft and the uh, switch actually sits perfectly in those slots, so if you do hit it then um, it's going to create damage and the switch won't go on evenly when you go to put it together. Now it's important to note the wave washer here, I've zoomed in so that you can see it. Just be careful that it doesn't fall into the windings when you remove the rotor. So on to the next.